Here at the Chris David Show, our duty is to bring you a wide range of topics centered on culture, society, and entertainment. On this episode of the Chris David Show, sexuality coach Tony Drumright Antoine shares why and how sex encompasses all three. Tony Drumright Antoine is an entrepreneur and certified sexuality coach. On this episode, she'll tell us why it's healthy for all of us to talk like sex. Let's bring Tony in. Tony, welcome. Hey. It's so welcome good to have to you. <laughs> Thank First you. First off, listen, it's good to see you again. Congratulations on everything. And, you know, just real quick, I, 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 I want to bring this up. You love, I, I love that you left New York. And you just flourished. Like yes. I had someone on recently, and, and they said the city had been spoiled, and yes. like York made everything too good to where it just couldn't ever be bad, you know. So it, I, it's good to see that you left and you were able to just take a breath and just exhale. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. At first, when I first left, I missed it. I think I traveled back at least I don't know two, three times a month. Every opportunity I got, I've. Re- Ran to New York, you know, we still have mutual friends there. You want to have dinner? Okay. All right. I'm on my way. Um, but now the little things that I appreciate the most, walking outside of my house and literally my car is right there, <laughs> you know, and if somebody parks in front of my space, I'm like, who is this? Whose car is that? Like just those little things that, you know, I just, I love now. Yeah. That's good. That's good. So this is what I want to ask you. How does one, well, not even how does one, how did you get started as a certified sexuality coach? Okay. So I have been in the industry for 14 years. So I'm not new to this, I'm true to this. But it started out, I was um, working for a company, they're no longer in business, but they sold toys, sex toys. And um, I didn't go into it like, you know, I didn't wake up one day saying, you know what? I think I'm going to find a company to sell sex toys. I was working my part-time job, of course, in New York City. It was a beautiful October day. Um, I quit before my lunch break. Um, I went to an expo called Circle of Sisters, and they had a table, like a booth there. And I signed up to book a party. And the reason I did it was because I was so shy as a kid that my teachers requested conferences with my parents because I didn't talk. Right. So I'm like, okay, well, if this isn't going to get me out of my shell, nothing will. And so that company went out of business, you know, a few years later. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Maybe it's no longer for me because I didn't agree with the company that bought them out. And I think that lasted like two weeks. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, but I still need to educate and empower young women. And so I did research on bedroom candy. So I'm currently a consultant with bedroom candy. Um, A lot of people think we're toys. We're not just toys. You know, we're a lifestyle company. So we have bath and body products. Um, They're vegan friendly. We do have things for, you know, self-love, self-pleasure. You know, we enhance relationships. But one of the beautiful things about being with Bedroom Candy is that candy supports additional streams of income. So through Bedroom Candy, I was able to go to the Dr. Rachel Institute and become a clinical certified sexuality coach. And so even though I'm still doing Bedroom Candy, I'm also flourishing out. And my niche is actually college age students. So, you know, for me, when I was younger, I didn't have the talk, you know? And I think a lot of people in our community don't, you know, get that talk or give that talk to their children. And for me, it was trial and error. And thank goodness I came out unscathed. But I don't want other young women and, you know, even young, young men to kind of go through life and go through those early years, especially the college years, not knowing how to practice safe sex, you know, how to learn to enjoy your body, 
what it is you like, just all those things that, you know, a lot of times we don't get that talk about and we just have to kind of learn it throughout the years. Exactly. And, you know, it's, it's, I like that you brought that up because there's so many people who I've spoken with who never had the talk. Yes. They, their parents didn't get it either. Mm-hmm. And if we look at the trajectory of history. We're going back to an era of, you know, um, after Jim Crow, when people just didn't talk about those things. Right. And then, you know, we went into the era of, um, you know, the AIDS epidemic. And Mm -hmm. people still weren't talking about those things. They were marking AIDS as just a gay white men's disease. Mm -hmm. And when AIDS started affecting, you know, Black people at just alarming rates, then it was like, okay, well, maybe something needs to be done. And, you know, it's so, I'm so glad you brought this up because I I had someone on recently um, who is a, not only is he a pole dancer and a pole dance instructor, he's also an HIV AIDS outreach specialist he does act uh, activism also and he gave like such a good talk about um you know condom negotiation what are some of the issues that your clients come to you with so it without depends. breaking hipaa i don't want to break hipaa or anything right <laughs> of course yes. All right. <laughs> so it depends on the circumstances so okay. a lot of times i travel to colleges so ideally you know i would love to continue that and just tour as many colleges as possible mm-hmm. um but as far as the sexuality coaching thing i've done colleges and i've spoken and given lectures and i've also um done half lecture and half bedroom candy presentation and so some of the questions or the things that people come to me about is I don't know how to have an orgasm or um, I think the trendy thing is squirting. You know, I don't know why a lot of people think that's like the end all be all, Um, but it's like, you got to learn your body first. You have to learn what you like and how things feel. And so a lot of the times people just, um, you know, what I help them through is just, you know, what's the best toy for me to be able to learn how to orgasm or to be able to learn what it is that I like. And then when I'm doing my parties on the flip side, because my demographic is a little bit older at my parties, a lot of times I will counsel women through, okay, well, my partner is having erectile issues or um, what can I do to help spice up my relationship? So, I mean, in 14 years, I've gotten tons of different sides of the spectrum, different um, questions or scenarios of, you know, what it is that we can provide a solution for. Um, but I think probably the most common thing is just people not really knowing their body and understanding like how to either have your partner give you an orgasm or self-pleasure, you know, learning your body, touching yourself, giving yourself an orgasm, things like that. And you know, in our community, I think that there was at one time, there was a stigma surrounding masturbation. People felt uncomfortable about Mm -hmm. masturbating and in turn ended up going out and having risky, you know, sexual activity. Right. And um, I think that the, 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 you know, the foundation of it all is self-love because if you can't love yourself and please yourself and know what you like, how can you do it for someone else? Right. I mean, it's virtually impossible. Mm-hmm. So um, I want to know though, what's the scope of a sex- certified sexuality coach? What are the confines? Like, I mean, I know you're not going into the bedroom with these people, no. but, <laughs> what, but what is the scope? So it's going to depend on what your niche is. So as okay. I just mentioned, my niche is college age women. So I would basically seek them out. Um, I travel to colleges. However, if I chose to do relationship counseling, um, it's a matter of, you know, you can break it down a little bit further. What specifically, um, you know, within that re- relationship, is it working through infidelity or is it working through um, some type of health issue where maybe the man can't get it up? You know, so it's going it to, de- it depends. However, overall, um, you know, once you go through your tra- training to become certified, um, you will meet with people so you can do it you know in this age especially within the last two years people are doing it virtually so you can meet you know couples one-on-one you can meet them together virtually 
Or if you choose, you can, you know, say if you have an office, you can have them come in. So it's going to depend on what the specific issue is that they're trying to work through. Um, but we have been trained on each individual scenario, and then we have continuing you know, education and training. So, you know, if I wanted to, I probably could, you know, venture out and do um, couples counseling or things like that. But for me personally, I'm so passionate about just the experience that I had about not getting the talk and trying to prevent other young women from, you know, thankfully I didn't end up being someone who had a teenage pregnancy that was unwanted. And now I'm raising a child that, you know, wasn't, in my expectation of my plan to be here. So I, you know, personally just want to continue down that road and talk to young women. So um, for me, even if I didn't go to colleges, I have, you know, um, options where I can speak one-on-one -on -one with young women. And I think today, you know, technology is like, you know, something that's very popular. So it could be via Zoom, of course, or if they wanted to meet one-on-one. -on -one. But for me personally, if it's not in a college or a school setting, my preference is uh, via Zoom. Nice. Um, you, you speak about that. And I know that a lot of college-age students, even, you know, high school students who are, you know, on the, the um, older side of high school, they're dating. Mm -hmm. And people often say that sex is something you should probably wait for when you're dating someone but wouldn't it just make more sense to get the sex out of the way ideally every parent wants their kids to wait as long as possible but that's not going to happen so i think it is important for parents to have those conversations and even if it's cringy you know for either the parent or the kid some conversations just are just difficult and they have to be had you know, because if you don't have them, your kid might be walking around with itching and scratching, if you know what I mean, and I think you do. <laughs> or you might be a grandparent at an early age and nobody wants that, you know. Or you have young women out here who don't know the importance of making sure that he's wearing a condom or who's afraid to um, see his reaction if you ask him to wear a condom and all types of foolishness, you know what I'm saying? So even if you're not you know, having uh, specific conversations, at least have those real talks about, okay, if he doesn't want to wear a condom, then, you know, it's time to bounce, you know, or just those different scenarios that could realistically happen. And, you know, that was going to be my next question, but I'm so glad that you jumped ahead and you answered that. And we, we're just on the wavelength today because I, I seriously, I was just about to ask you, what advice would you give someone whose partner doesn't want to wear condoms because it's something that I think all of us have experienced. Like I've experienced that, you know, I'm sure there are other people watching and listening who've experienced the same thing. And it's mm -hmm. very serious. Right. And for young women, I think they don't realize that this is not the last penis on earth. You know what I'm saying? So it might be difficult to walk away from this particular guy because you're feeling him and he's not going to wear a condom, but you really, really want it. It's not worth it. It's really not because sex is like Russian roulettes, you know, and you never know what some of these people are walking around with. You got people who don't want to go to the doctor, who haven't seen a doctor in years since they were going to the pediatric doctor when their parents took them. You got these guys walking around here who are really disrupting your pH. Like there's so many different you know, levels to it. It's not just, you know, an unwanted pregnancy. It's it's a whole plethora of things. It's things that you can't get rid of. So that one decision to not have a guy use a condom can leave you with lifelong issues. Absolutely. What are some of the red flags that you tell your clients to look for? Um, in a relationship, I think, especially what we're talking about now, controlling behavior. So, um, and that's, that's, you know, with young guys and girls, and that's with, you know, older people as well, controlling behavior, but more specifically with younger adults, um, if you have a guy who is not willing to wear a condom or just any of those types of things, and I don't want to specifically keep harping on, you know, guys not wearing a condom because, you know, women do things as well, but I think controlling behavior is extremely important um, to look out for. That's a big red flag. Um, and then manipulation. It's another red flag to look out for, you know, gaslighting, 
many years ago, gaslighting was not a popular term. It was just something that you noticed that people did. Um, but I think people are more um, aware of the term and how to pick up on cues and, you know, what it means or what it feels like to see someone gaslighting you. So I think those are major red flags in both relationships and with, you know, individuals. And I want to add one, um, love bombing. I don't think yes. a lot of people know exactly what love bombing is and what it entails, but when a person is just giving you, and all right, kids, I want all you kids, because I know you watch. It's only the kids are watching. They're not supposed okay. to, but they watch. <laughs> if someone's giving you too many compliments and they're mm -hmm. just overpouring, this is just an overpouring of just, oh, you're so great. You're so wonderful. Oh, 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 that's love bombing. Yes. And then the next step in that is grooming, manipulation, abuse. So mm -hmm. someone's love bombing you and they're saying all the right things make you feel good. You might want to run. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. But Tony, what are some of the green flags that you tell people to look for? Someone who is attentive. And I think people sleep on that. But someone who's really attentive. For me, it's so impressive if I say something and I just say it in jest, not even, you know, looking for something or saying it for a reason. But if I say something and then weeks or months later, you come back and you address that or, you know, if I say, I don't know, I, I've never had French toast before, something like that. And then two months down the line, you know, you go and make me this extravagant French toast meal. Just those little teeny things that you don't realize someone's paying attention to, but they're really taking you seriously and taking an interest in what it is that you're talking about. Um, so I think just that's so important that people pick up on just those, those little things like that. You know, I think these days people are so impressed by material things and what a person can do for them. But at the end of the day, if you're looking for a relationship or long term or forever, those little things mean, you know, mean so much. So I think um, just being attentive is really important, um, as well as open communication, you know, um, it's so important to have conversations, whether, you know, you want to have them or not. Um, if you're comfortable enough comfortable enough to have a conversation with someone, even if you don't want to have that conversation and they're open to that, I think that's a great thing. It is. It really is. Um, what advice would you give someone who, let's say they, they're in a religion or a culture where talking about sex is taboo? What advice would you give them? Um, so that's a difficult one. I would say um, it's inevitable. You know, because, and it's going to depend on who they want to have that conversation with. So if, if it's, um, you know, you can't have that conversation with maybe your parents because it's culturally unacceptable, then maybe you can find an adult or a grown up that you trust, you know, a mentor or someone who is a safe space. You know, I think it's very important that we all have someone in our lives that is just a safe space and you can go to them and have conversations and, you know, there's no judgment. You know, they're not going to go behind your back and say anything. So if you are in a situation where, you know, you can't have that conversation with your family because it's not culturally appropriate, then for sure, definitely um, just seek someone else out. You don't have to seek out many, many people because sometimes people talk, um, you know, if you just have that one person that you know you can trust and have that conversation with, then, um, you know, I, I would recommend that for sure. And also doing research. A lot of things you can find out on the internet now. Um, so if, if you have to do a couple of Google searches or um, read a few books or whatever, just do that, but don't sit in silence. Right. Now, what age do you think is the perfect age to talk to a child about sex? Wow. Hmm. Yeah, see, I told you, I, I'm a journalist, Tony. I told you, I, I asked yeah. a lot of questions. That's, That's a good question because I, I didn't have the talk. So just in my head, wondering, I would probably say around 16 is appropriate. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. I could be wrong because these kids these days, you know, um, I think there's levels to the I can tell you stories. <laughs>
there's levels to the conversation. So I think maybe you can start off way earlier than 16, maybe, I don't know, 12 ish, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and just thinking about it, I have a 13 year old nephew and he's recognizing songs and he likes Nicki Minaj. And so I would say around 12 or 13, you can have those basic parts of the conversation. And then just the older they get, you just keep adding on and just until you get down and dirty with them. I remember I was probably 10 when okay. my father had to talk with me. And mm -hmm. that's because I was always younger than everybody. Like everyone in class was older than me. Like I was, I was 10 in class with people who were 11 and 12. So okay. they were like already starting to carry on. And I just remember his talk was, you know, showing me how to use a condom. He used, you know, he had a banana and that it was just, and I'm 10, so I'm like, I'm not going to be able to do that. But it was just a very basic, very like straightforward talk that didn't really go in depth. Yeah. And then my mother, I think because she didn't really have that talk, like my, my grandmother had six kids by the time she was like 22. So my mother definitely didn't have that talk. For sure. Um, so... I kind of had to figure things out through friends, mm -hmm. um, through TV. There was a film that came out um, when I was a kid. It was called Just Another Girl on the IRT. Mm -hmm. And it was about a girl who had gotten pregnant as a teenager. And I went to Catholic school. And for some reason, they showed us that film. I don't know if it was just because we were all Black or if it was just to put the fear of God in us. But yeah. <laughs> it scared me. I was watching a show. There was a show on Vice. And Joanna was on the show, actually. You know, jo Joanna Briley, yes. our homegirl. Uh -huh. And um, there's just so much information out there that I think it, it's what I call noise. You get what I'm saying? It's just so mm -hmm. much. How can we weed through all of that to get to the facts about sex? I, I think it's just constant reading and researching because... You know, a lot of people, unfortunately, and it sucks, but a lot of people get their expectation or their so-called knowledge from porn, right? And that's not realistic. You know what I'm saying? So it's almost like you got to reprogram people to know what the real is. Um, so it's just a matter of being with someone and talking about what it is that you like. You know, I think people go into relationships sometimes, and I know expert on, you know, relationships, but sometimes people go into relationships and just assume sexually, you're going to like what I like, or you're going to like the basics or the general things. But having those conversations about specifically, you know, what do you like? What turns you on? What turns you off? So that's, you know, that's still important. Um, it's those conversations like that, but then it's also, you know, continually reading and, and researching things. Um, I think it's not common for people to do research on things like sex, but you got to learn it somehow, you know, and there are books and websites and things of that nature that do talk about um, proper sexual health and wellness, you know, and then one thing that, you know, we pride ourselves on at Bedroom Candy is that we are destigmatizing a lot of those myths. Um, when it comes to sex as well. So, um, you know, even if you don't want to read, book a party, you know, with someone, with a consultant, and you can ask those questions at the party. Like, you know, when I'm having parties, it's not just me showing toys and products. We're having a dialogue because I definitely create a safe space. So it's my parties are like Vegas. What goes on in this room stays in this room. And then to break it down even further, once it's time for you to place your order, we go into a private room and we can break down those conversations even more. So if I talk about something in general, we can go into the ordering room and then you can tell me things like, okay, well, my partner has a problem getting it up or, you know, I experience an odor down there or just those little things like that. So even if you don't want to read, just seek out someone who has the knowledge on things that you may have questions about. And let me tell you something, folks, personally, I've had, Tony over and she's done a party at my house many, I many did, years ago. That's right. She's done a party and she's very thorough. And I'll put all her information in so you guys can book her. Um, I believe, what states do you do? You do, so you do from Virginia to like Connecticut. What do you do? 
So I do Northern Virginia to okay. New York, and then I also do Atlanta on request. Okay. So and that's big. Yeah. So, and I, I travel depending on the circumstances. Like I traveled, I was requested to come to Zachary, Louisiana one time. I had no idea where Zachary, Louisiana was. Shout out to them. I, like, I mean, is that me in New Orleans or, or where is that? It was, so what happened was I had enough airline points racked up that both me and my husband were able to fly for free. Okay. And we had never been to New Orleans before. And they were going to put us up on their property because they had like property. Okay. And, but we had never been to New Orleans before. So we flew into New Orleans and stayed there. But I think the drive was... If I remember, it was something like, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes-ish. It was closer to Baton Rouge. Okay, yeah. Baton Rouge. So and we went across the long, crazy bridge. Yeah. But um, it was an experience. The Pontchartrain bridge. Yes. That bridge. Yep. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 So depending on the circumstances, I do travel, but for the most part, New York down to Northern Virginia. Um, I can do North Carolina because my mom is in the, uh, North Carolina. Okay. And then, like I said, Atlanta. Okay. And guys, I'm telling you, she's on point. Like, seriously. Yeah. And one <laughs> thing, something that you mentioned earlier, but also mm -hmm. coinciding with my parties, one thing I pride myself on is using proper genitalia terms. Okay. And I wanted to mention, even when you were talking about having conversations with kids and when your dad gave you the talk at age 10 yes. ish, it's important to have conversations and use words like penis and yes. not dick or cock or things like that right, right. or vagina just so that people can really learn because not everyone is um not everyone knows you know proper terms and then mm. you grow up and especially if you have kids who you know not to be a Debbie Downer but if a kid is in a situation where they need to tell an adult that someone touched them they need to know the name of that body part yes. you know so even at my parties we have fun we turn up i'm going to educate you and empower you but we're also going to have a kitty and, and, and she's not lying you really are going to have a kitty. <laughs> you, you are like oh my goodness um here's the burning question though and hopefully i don't get striked or banned or anything like that but i'm going to ask i don't care and i'm sorry for, listen it's only i'm over here borrowing flex's bombs and everything <laughs> You'll hear it and you can't hear it, I can hear it. But in your opinion, I want to know what you think the biggest sexual misconception is. Hmm. Wow, that's a good one. So I would say, so right now, um, I know there was a conversation going around recently on like social, me social media about oral sex and how men don't like to give oral or um more specifically Caribbean men, like there's a popular DJ who doesn't do it with his wife and just things like that. Um, I think that's a misconception, um, especially let's say you meet somebody and they're, I don't do that. I don't do that. I think it's going to depend on the person that you with, you're with, you know, because you might not admit it to your last three girlfriends, but you might meet the one who, oh, I think I want to do it now. I want to try it. So it's just little things like that, like the whole oral sex thing um, is a, a, a misconception. And um, I think anal. So anal is like taboo um, and to each his own, you know, not my thing, but to each its own. And one thing that I definitely have a conversation about is I don't want to yuck anybody's yum. So it might be yummy for you, but it might be yucky for someone else, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a huge taboo. And especially, you know, at my parties, I'm, I always introduce an anal toy and I talk about anal for a couple of minutes. And you got the people who are over here like, you cringing. And you got the people who are leaning into me. You know, and so I know those are verbal cues that or, or not verbal cues, but those are um, cues that make me want to, OK, let me talk more specifically to this person and let me let them know, OK, well, if you're going to do this, then you need this or, you know, you need to feel this way, be relaxed. So I think the whole anal thing is like a huge thing where no one wants to admit to it. 
You know, I think at my parties, probably if I had, I don't know, 10 parties within a couple of months, I would probably have like maybe two or three people who would admit it or even showed interest. But at the end of the day, there's probably 50% of those people who, you know, are really loving it or, or at least want to enjoy it or experiment with it or are curious about it. You know, so I think email is a big one. Here's my next question. And it, it just it goes right in line with what you're saying. Um, how can someone tell their partner that they may need to change things up in the bedroom? I think there's a couple of ways. So you can either, um, and it's going to depend on what it is that you want. So if you want to introduce toys, um, you might want to start off with a toy that you both can use. So just giving you like a perfect example, we have a toy where um, it's not like a phallic shaped toy. It's not like a dildo. It's a toy that goes on your finger, but you can encourage your partner to put it on their finger and they're touching your clitoris. So they're still pleasuring you. The toys are not meant to erase your man. It's meant to enhance relationships, right? So it's going to depend, but that's like a really good way to introduce a toy if you want to experiment with toys. Um, if you feel like they're positioning, you know, they always want to be like missionary or doggy, you switch it up. You know, sometimes they just don't know. And if you don't want to have that conversation, maybe during the act of intercourse, maybe you can just, you take control and you can switch up the positions and show them what it is that you like. And then have a conversation about it. Did you like that? Oh, yeah, I liked it. You know, and if they didn't like it, just go further into the conversation. Okay, well, what would you do differently? You know, so it's about communication, but it's also about just bringing things into the relationship if you want to. Um, we have like a BDSM line. So if you want to experience, um, experiment with bondage or things like that, like there's a ton of things or, op, you know, different options that you can do to switch things up. Um, we have a swing. If you want to swing from the door, you can do that. Um, a lot of men don't realize that you're willing to go further than what you're going, you know? So then when you switch it up, they're like, oh, okay, okay. Um, so sometimes you're blowing their mind without them even expecting it. So it's just um, kind of taking a little bit of control. And even if you're too shy, just have those conversations or just kind of ease into it, you know? So like I said, we have a, that beginner toy where it's, it's probably this big. You can put it on their finger and they can pleasure you and that's introducing the toys. But then we have it, if you want to take it further, we have the whips, uh, we have the swing. So it just depends, but yeah, we can get you there. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and the thing is, don't be afraid, you know, I'm telling everybody out there, don't be afraid to be a freak body. There's nothing wrong with it. It's actually very healthy and it's very empowering. And, you know, we had um, a guest on recently, um, the guy I was telling you about earlier, he's, the, you know, the, um, the pole dancer guy. And he was saying, um, he was telling me about his persona. And he said, for him, it's all about, sex is all about the allure. It's all about, mm -hmm. you know, the magic. Now, is, is that allure something innate? Or is it something that you have to develop? I mean, like, how can someone tap into their inner sex kitten, their inner sex god, sex goddess? Well, I think sex is part mind, but part body. So we're obviously using our body for sex, but it's all in your mind. Cause you can have every intention of going home and putting it down on your partner, right? But if somebody cuts you off in traffic or you had a bad day, you just can't get your mind right. You know, you got bills due or anything like that your body isn't going to work with you, you know, meaning you're not, you're not going to produce lubrication. Just those little things that people don't realize. Sex is not just your body. It's not the, just the physical act of having intercourse. Um, and then as far as like your inner sex kitten, you have to know specifically what it is that you want, but you have to embrace it, you know? And I, I'm not going to recommend drinking, you know, if you want to have a drink, drink. But at the same time, if you Feel like you need to get a little comfortable take a shot you know you already know what it is that you want it's just a matter of you being comfortable enough to get there number one if you care about your partner that should be the first step you know like i really love my husband so therefore i'm comfortable around my husband you know it's going to depend on your comfort level with that person but you also have to want it enough to be able to commit to it you know yeah and and two you know maybe you don't want a shot maybe you want a little, you know, like an edible or something like that. Right. That's fine yeah. too. 
you mm-hmm. know, that, that, you know, or maybe there's, you know, like some dessert or something that you really like that really gets you in the mood. I mean, it, it's different for everybody. Everybody right. has I different things that they like. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to, okay, I'm about to go into another zone now. Okay. A lot of people have misconceptions regarding the difference between the alternative relationships. So let's say like polygamy, polyamory, swinging, open relationships. Could you break that down for the class? Because a lot of people like to use terms and they use them interchangeably. And I think that there needs to be, a more, you know, there, there needs to be a discussion. On yeah. That. So I don't go really too far um, into those realms at my parties or when I'm speaking to um, the students. Um, but polyamory, of course, if is, you know, it's pretty much the opposite of monogamy. It's not that single one-on-one relationship where you're committed and they're committed to you. So polyamory is they're all mutually deciding that they're going to be intertwined in that single relationship. And it's, you know, usually either multiple women and one man or multiple uh, men and one woman. Um, Swinging is normally when you are in a specific relationship with a person or in an agreement or understanding with a person, and then you all specifically seek out another couple or another group to have relationships or any type of fun, not relationships, but relations or any type of fun with. And then open relationships are basically if you're in a person in a relationship with one person, but you give each other options to um, seek out and have relations with other people. So um, a lot of times I've seen where there's been instances where we're going to be together. You're going to love me. I'm going to love you but we're going to have intercourse with other people as we so please. But mm, we may not fall in love with those people or we may not seek out um, a future with those people. So it's that type of understanding. And I think those with uh, those types of relationships, they kind of break it down amongst, you know, themselves. So they kind of put the parameters on what it is that they want in an open relationship. But for the most part, they're giving each other permission to seek out and have intercourse with others. And you, you just brought up something very important, permission. Yes. That is like the the key word of this whole entire discussion. Absolutely. Permission. Yes. Because without that, you, you don't need to be, no one needs to be doing anything without permission right. or right. consent, as they say. Real quick, though, I have to shout out my friend Katrina because she and I talk about this all the time. And when she hears this, Tony, she's going to knife me, but I don't care. I'm going to say it anyway. I need some breaking down with celibacy and abstinence. Again, people use that interchangeably, but I need some breaking down. Wow. You know what? I've literally never thought about it, like the breakdown of those two. However, celibacy is a choice. You know, I'm making a concerted choice to not have intercourse for, you know, this amount of time. So, you know, a lot of people will be celibate for specific reasons. Maybe you just got out of a relationship and you just need a cleanse to get your mind and your body right. Um, And abstinence is... Um, and you, you hear about abstinence a lot with a lot of younger people, but abstinence is the act of not having, and so like saving it, don't, you know, you're not having sex. Um, but yeah, that's a good one. I, I've never really thought like in detail about the difference between those two. Um, one thing that I will just by you saying it though, and then me um, taking it in, we hear about abstinence a lot with the younger crowd, and then we hear about celibacy a lot with the older crowd. Um, And the celibacy is more, um, you're making a concerted effort. Like you're not, you're putting on a time, like I'm not gonna have sex for X amount of times or X amount of years. Um, And then of course with celibacy, with abstinence, it's, it's normally encouraging younger individuals to not have so I feel like it's almost the encouraging it's someone else encouraging people right to not have intercourse and then the celibacy is all on you you're making that decision how I understood it was that one was a a vow um celibacy is more of a vow and then abstinence is more of a decision a choice that you make yeah yeah that's a good way to I don't know I don't know it's a lot (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's why I have you here, because it's a lot. It's a lot for me to try and 
piece together. But I want to shift gears for a moment. Um, I want you to tell everybody about your businesses and your entrepreneurship. Okay. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, candy, and when I say candy and bedroom candy, a lot of people don't realize it's candy bars from, depending on how old you are, from either escape or from Real Housewives of Atlanta. Or However, from when you're out in the club, don't think I'm not. That's, okay. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, but she really encourages us to have multiple streams of income. And, you know, the way I see it, and, you know, we had someone come in and she basically said, one stream of income is hazardous to your wealth. And so for me- Say it again. I, you got to say that one again. One stream of That's income good. is hazardous to your wealth. Y'all hear that? So <laughs> okay. I think it's important to know if entrepreneurship is for you. Because, you know, you'll log on to Instagram and the first thing you see is, okay, everybody, you need to- form an LLC. And it's like, okay, and then do what? You know, if you're not the type of person who wants to be an entrepreneur, then you can get that LLC all you want, but what are you going to do with it? You know, me personally, I feel like I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit. So when I was like in the seventh grade, I used to steal my parents' jeans and cut them up and make little duffel bags. So that sold them for like $3. And then for an extra 50 cents, I put your name on the pocket on the front. <laughs> So even for me, way back then, I always had it in my head. I need money and I need, you know, different ways to get it. And so um, I got my first job when I was 15 and I had two jobs then. And I think from age 15 to now, and I'm um, in my 40s, I've always had either two jobs or a job and a side hustle. And so for me, it's always been just ingrained in me to be some type of entrepreneur. Um, but fast forward until today. So um, as we mentioned, I am a clinical certified sexuality coach. I got that through the Dr. Rachel Institute. And again, that is, you know, me reaching out to college age students, me traveling to colleges. And then I also do bedroom candy. And so within Bedroom Candy, the good thing about that is we have multiple income streams within that. So even if toys aren't your thing, as I mentioned earlier, um, we have um, we have our Bath and Body line. We have an unwind CBD collection. Um, but also the beauty of it is we also have a separate cosmetic side. So even if toys and those, things of those nature aren't your thing, um, you can just sell cosmetics. You know, we have a lot of people here who are makeup artists. You can be a makeup artist and also a consultant selling the cosmetics. And not only are you making money from your makeup artistry, but you're also making money from the makeup that you sell. So our makeup line is called Candy Coated. Um, and then I also, uh, independent of that, I have a bath and body line on my own called Lavender Kitty. Um, so Lavender Kitty, I basically focus on self-care. Um, and so we have body oils, um, body butters, and I also have uh, loose teas as well. So for me, you know, they say the average millionaire has seven streams of income. Um, and I'm still working on things. So for me, I just, I want all the coin, okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think for me, I just, I never want to be in a position where I can't eat. You know, I, I'm way too passionate about food. I love it. <laughs> and I just And listen, y'all, well, she can eat. Don't be fooled, okay? Because <laughs> she's eating me under the table. And y'all know how big I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's eating I, me I just... under the table. <laughs> <laughs> I love comfort so much. And I like yeah. what I like. But I think for me, the things that I do, I really enjoy them. You know, like as a, a, a you know, a teenager, I never in a million years thought that I would be going around traveling to people's homes, talking about sex and orgasms and things like that. And I really love it, you know. Um, so I just think the way you position it um, can really be beneficial. It can make you money. Um, but yeah, entrepreneurship is very important to me. Sometimes you just got to get out there and, and do it because, you know, especially when we're working for other people, and I, I do have a nine to five as well, um, but you never know. They can come in and say, hey, we're going to lay you off, even though you've been with us for X amount of years, and there's nothing that can do about it. You know, they can do it at any time. And so if that were to ever happen, at least I know I have have my other streams of income that I can fall back on. 
I mean, and you've got you got so much going on. You've got the the sex coaching, the toys, the makeups, the butters, the lotions, the bombs, the teas, the yes. the jean bags. I mean, it's like <laughs> when do you sleep? He's like, well, the jean bags were just in elementary or middle school. <laughs> Listen, you might have to bring those back though, because they sound fly. Okay. I'm just <laughs> yes, I, I I still can sew, so don't get it twisted. It could come back. And look, um, listen, and she sews. Yeah. Um, you know what? It's just about time management. It really, really is. You know. Um, so I'm fortunate where you know when you're an entrepreneur, I can say, you know what? I might not do parties this month because I want to travel, or I want to spend time with my family, or I want to you know just chill. Um, so that's the beauty about being with Beverly Candy is that I don't have, there's no quotas. There's no requirements that you have to do X amount of parties or anything like that. I can do it when I do it. And I'm fortunate where um, the parties come to me. You got to say your mantras, but the parties come to me, you know, um, and then I have such a, a following from over the last 14 years and I get referrals and so there's different things but I think the most important part is time management and being able to kind of look ahead of time and know okay I'm going to be available on this weekend where I can work on Lavender Kitty I can work on Lavender Kitty this evening during the week and I can do a bedroom candy party on these particular weekends so So how can people get in touch with you if they want to buy products they want to visit your website how can they get in touch with you Okay, so I just launched a new website, which kind of gives you all of my avenues. That website is called thekittychronicles.co. Um, but you can also find me on Instagram. Uh, I have a couple of pages, but for Bedroom Candy, that was Bedroom Candy underscore by Tony, T-O-N-I. And then um, La Lavender Kitty Lux is for my Bath and Body products. But yeah, if you want to just overall, and I do have blogs that I've started to post weekly on my website. So again, that is thekittychronicles.co. All right. That's thekittychronicles.co, not com. No, <laughs> C-O. C is in coconut, O is in oil. And then we have Lavender Kitty Lux, L-U-X as in X, all one word on IG. Mm -hmm. And then we have Bedroom Candy, uh, underscore by Tony, that's also on, on our IG. Make sure you spell candy with a K and with an I, and Tony with an I. Be sure that underscore is in there, or else you will be on the wrong page. Just like I tell y'all, don't put an H in my name, because you're going to go to somebody else's page. And my last name is not Davis, it's David. So pay attention. Y'all got to pay attention. Open up your ears. Um, also, there's no consultation fee. So y'all better hop on that before the price goes up. Because every time people come on here, the price goes up. So, bedroom candy underscore by Tony. Make sure, I'll, I'll put everything up so that everybody can find it. But okay. really quickly, before we wrap up, I ask everybody this. And this, so don't feel like I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> if you had a time machine, what would you go back and tell yourself in the past? And it could be at any time in the past, doesn't matter. But what would you go back and tell yourself? That they didn't stop making dick when they made his. And it's okay to move on. <laughs> Hope y'all heard that. Because that's very important. Because mm -hmm. you may, somebody may be out here listening or watching and they're in a situation and they think that that's the end all be all. Right. And it's not. It's not. And as a man, I can tell you, it's not. And then also as a man, I can tell you that we're very simple. We're not very hard and very difficult to please. So you don't have to go dealing with someone you don't want to deal with. Be with the one you want to be with. And just remember, they didn't stop making dick when they made his. <laughs> What do you have going on next, Tony? <laughs> what do you have coming um, up? So I have a couple of Bevel Candy parties. So that's what okay. I'm going to be doing for the next few weekends. And I'm All right, so let us know about those. Yep. So I have one. And basically, these are people who reach out to me and say, you know, I want to do a girlfriend's, uh, you know, girlfriend's night in or whatever. Um, so this one is this next one. Uh, this weekend, actually, is going to be in Alexandria, Virginia. 
Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. And then I have a couple more parties for March, um, but my March calendar is definitely still open. Um, and then within the next month or two, I have new products that I'm going to be launching on Lavender Kitty's website. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Good. Nice. And if people want to do parties, um, you know, I'll leave up all your information so they can reach out mm -hmm. to you. And I'm telling you guys, like as somebody who's had a party before, her parties are great. And I'm sure they're even better now, like yes. years later. And do you still make the seafood salad? I just, <laughs> do you still make that? I haven't made it in so long. Really? <laughs> that seafood salad is just like heavenly. And I've tried to make it myself like since, uh -huh. and it still doesn't hit the way yours hit. But also, I'm not from Baltimore like you are, so I just, right. <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't hit. But thank you, Tony, for coming by. Like, I'm going to have you on again. And the thing is, um, before I have you on again, I'll let everybody know so they can send in questions. Because okay. I would love for you to just answer questions. Like, I don't do lives or anything like that, but it would be, you know, like, I'd have the questions and just ask you and, you know, you can answer them and they can watch and hopefully take your advice and and be better um i mean listen she's like the black dr ruth y'all need to you know, <laughs> reach out she do it all um how can they get in touch with you once again um so once again my website is the kitty chronicles.co so there is a couple of links on there i think there's even at the bottom of the first page my instagram is linked so you'll be able to scroll down and connect directly to my bedroom candy instagram also, there is a link for Bedroom uh, bedroom Candy. So um, you can click and that will launch you directly to my Bedroom Candy website, where if you want to purchase or take a look around at the different options and uh, products that we have, you can go there. And then there's also a tab for Lavender Kitty. Um, and then once again, Instagram, it's at Lavender Kitty Lux. Or my Bedroom Candy site is at Bedroom Candy underscore by Tony, T-O-N-I. All right. Listen, I'm going to have to come down there one day and we're going to have to go to the D.C. museums. Yes. They're free. Yes. We're going to have to do okay. that. They're free. <laughs> and yeah, everybody, when she lived in New York, this was my museum buddy. I would be home during the day because I was in grad school and I'd be like, supposedly, I was supposed to be working on my thesis, but I, I wasn't. But um, we go to the museums, yeah, and we have a good time. And then you told yes. me the blue smoke. Remember, you, I had met you. Yes, yes. So yeah, and and the Whitney. I still have that bag from the Whitney Museum. All I still have a later. book that I purchased from the Whitney. <laughs> I still have. I have mine. Remember the um the oh, Lego yeah. book. Yes, yes. Because I'm I'm I love Legos. I'm still a big kid when it comes to that, but. I want to thank everybody for listening and watching. I want you to tell your friends, tell your mama, tell your daddy, tell your baby daddy, tell your boyfriend, tell your sister, tell your kittens, tell your pit bulls, tell your bullies. <laughs> tell, listen, tell everybody at Bedroom Candy to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chris David TV and follow our show at The Chris David Show on Instagram and YouTube. That's Chris with the C, no H, David like David Bowie, TV on IG and Twitter. And the Chris with the C, no H, David like David Bowie, show on YouTube and IG. You can also visit chrisdavidshow.com. There you'll find links to all the great things I mentioned, as well as our Patreon for exclusive content. Like some of the things Tony said, they were a little too habanero, you know, a little too, you know, 19 over permitted. <laughs> so wasn't it as, as Chris with the C, no H, David like David Bowie, Maryland. Dot com. So y'all take care and talk like sex rated XXX.